Hey everyone, and welcome. Today we're tackling leak code problem 3403, find the lexicographically larger string from the box one. It sounds a bit like a game, and we'll break down exactly what it means, and how to solve it, step by step. So here's the gist. We're given a string, let's call it word, and a number, num friends. Alice is playing a game. In each round she splits the word into exactly num friends pieces. Importantly, each piece must be non-empty. And here's a little twist. No two rounds can have the exact same set of pieces in the same order. After she figures out a way to split the word, all those individual pieces, those substrings, get tossed into a big box. Our job is to look into this box after all possible rounds are done and find the string that would come last if we sorted them all alphabetically. That's the lexicographically largest string. Let's walk through the first example. The input word is D, B, C, A, and the number of friends is two. This means Alice needs to split D, B, C, A into two non-empty pieces. How can she do this? Well, first, she could split it as D and B, C, A. Both D and B, C, A go into our imaginary box. Another way, she could split it as D, B, and C, A. So D, B, and C, A also end up in the box. And one more way, D, B, C, and A. Now, D, B, C, and A are added to the box. So if we look at all the strings that landed in our box, we have D, B, C, A, D, B, C, A, D, B, C, and A. Now among these, which one is the lexicographically largest? Meaning, if we sorted them, which one would be last? That would be D, B, C. So D, B, C is our answer for this example. Now, notice something important from that example. The original word DBCA has a length of 4. We were splitting it for two friends. The longest piece we actually got was BCA, which has a length of 3. This length, 3, isn't just a coincidence. It's the maximum possible length any single piece could have in this scenario. We can calculate this maximum. Take the total length of the word, which is 4. Subtract the number of friends, which is 2. And then add 1. So 4 minus 2 plus 1 equals 3. This formula which we can write as n minus num friends plus 1, where n is the word's length, gives us the longest any single piece can be. Why is this the case? Well, every friend has to get at least one character. So if one friend takes a piece of a certain length, the remaining characters of the word must be enough for all the other num friends minus one friends, and each of them needs at least one character. This means any string that ends up in the box must be a substring of the original word, and its length can't be more than this calculated maximum. So what does this insight mean for solving the problem? It simplifies things a lot. Instead of thinking about all the complex ways to split the string, and then collecting all the parts, we can reframe the problem. We're essentially looking for the lexicographically largest substring of our original word that also respects that length constraint we just figured out. Its length must be less than or equal to n minus num friends plus 1. Okay, so how do we find that? A straightforward idea is to just look at all possible substrings of the word. For every substring we find, we first check if its length is within our allowed maximum. If it is, we then compare it to the largest valid substring we've found so far. If this new one is lexicographically larger, it becomes our new champion. We repeat this for all substrings, and the champion we have at the end is our answer. Let's formalize that into an algorithm. First, we get the length of our word, let's call it n pris, a quick special case. If num friends is just one, then the only split is the entire word itself. So the word itself is the answer. Otherwise, we calculate that max length allowed we talked about, n minus num friends plus one. We should probably make sure this is at least one. If it's zero or less, it means the word is too short to be split among that many friends, but the problem implies valid splits are possible. Then, we'll need a variable, say, largest string found, and we'll start it off as an empty string or something guaranteed to be smaller than any real substring. Now for the main part, we use nested loops. The outer loop picks a starting position for our potential substring, let's call this i, going from the beginning of the word to its end. The inner loop picks an ending position, let's call it j. This j starts from i, and goes up to either i plus max length allowed minus 1, or the end of the word, whichever comes first. This ensures our substring word, j doesn't exceed the allowed length, and stays within the word's bounds. Inside these loops, we grab the current substring from i to j. We then compare it to our larger string found. If this current substring is alphabetically bigger, it becomes the new larger string found. After checking all possible i and j combinations, the larger string found will hold our answer. 
All right, here's what that logic looks like in Python code. Don't worry if it seems like a lot at first glance. We'll go through the key parts. The overall structure directly follows the algorithm we just discussed. First up, we get n, the length of the word. Then, we handle that simple case. If numFriends is 1, we just return the word itself because it's the only piece. Next, we calculate max underscore len underscore substring, which is n minus numFriends plus 1. This is the maximum length any piece can have. There's a small check here. If this max underscore len underscore substring turns out to be 0 or negative, which could happen if the word is shorter than the number of friends, it means no valid piece of at least length 1 can be formed. In such a scenario an empty string might be returned, as no valid positive length substring fits the criteria. Finally res is initialized. This variable, which we can think of as result, will store the larger string we find as we go. We start it as an empty string. Now, we hit the first main loop. This loop, for i in range n, iterates through each possible starting position of a substring. The variable i will take on values from 0 up to n minus 1 covering every character in the word as a potential start of our target substring. Inside that outer loop we have another loop. This inner loop is for j underscore idx. This j underscore idx represents the inclusive end index of our substring. It starts from i, meaning the shortest substring has length 1, and goes up to a calculated limit. This limit is the smaller of two values, i plus max underscore len underscore substring, or n, the end of the word. This ensures that the substring word j underscore i dx plus 1, which grabs characters from index i up to, but not including, index j underscore i dx plus 1, respects our maximum length constraint and doesn't go out of bounds. So current underscore substring is formed using this i and j underscore i dx. Once we have our current underscore substring, we compare it with res, our best so far. The condition if not res handles the very first substring we check, when res is still empty. In that case, any current underscore substring becomes the res. Otherwise, current underscore substring greater than res checks if the new substring is lexicographically greater than our current res. If it is, we update res to be this current underscore substring. After both loops complete, res will hold the lexicographically largest valid substring, and that's what we return. So how efficient is this solution? Let's talk about complexity. For time complexity, we have an outer loop that runs n times, where n is the length of the word. Inside it, there's an inner loop that can also run up to n times in the worst case, when max underscore len underscore substring is close to n. Now, inside the inner loop, we're doing two main things, creating the current underscore substring and comparing it to res. Creating a substring, slicing, of length l generally takes time proportional to l. Comparing two strings of length l also takes time proportional to l. Since l can be up to n for inches, these operations can take up to order n time. So, we have n times n times n for inches, which gives us a time complexity of big O, of n cubed less. For space complexity, we're storing res and current underscore substring. In the worst case, these strings can have a length of n. So the space used is proportional to n pres, which is big O, of n. So, to recap the journey, the problem asked us to find the lexicographically largest string that could appear as a piece when a word is split among a certain number of friends. The big aha moment was realizing that any such piece must be a substring of the original word, and its length is limited by n minus num friends plus 1. This transformed the problem into finding the lexicographically largest substring that meets this length rule. Our solution then was to systematically check every possible substring, verify its length, and keep track of the largest one found according to alphabetical order. This approach gives us a time complexity of order n cubed, and space complexity of order n. Hope that breakdown made sense and helped you understand how to tackle this problem. If it was useful, feel free to hit that like button, maybe subscribe for more explanations, or drop a comment if you have any questions or thoughts. And hey, if you're feeling extra generous, there's always the Boba Fund. Keep practicing, keep coding, and I'll catch you in the next one.